my name is Bill Dallas, and I'd like to welcome you to a very special CCN broadcast. We're coming to you live from Stanford University, and we're broadcasting to churches all across North America. We're in Canada, Mexico, the United States, Bahamas, and I just want to welcome you to tonight. Our program is called Atheism versus Theism and Scientific Evidence of Intelligent Design. This is in partnership with Motive Entertainment, and tonight's program is a debate format. What that means, you get a chance to actually participate in tonight's broadcast. We're going to ask you to email or fax in questions, and then later in tonight's program, we're going to actually ask some of those questions of our presenters. You can email us or fax us at 650-745-0660, or you can email the questions, and this contact information should be up on your screen right now, at questions at ccnonline.net. Now, tonight's program is a debate, but we have a very special host for tonight, and that is Ben Stein. Let me tell you a little bit about Ben. He's known for his acting career and signature role in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, <laughs> but he's also an author, economist, and lawyer. He graduated with honors from Columbia University and Yale Law School, and he served as a speechwriter for President Nixon and President Ford. He has published seven novels and nine nonfiction books. He's a regular columnist for the New York Times and Yahoo Finance, and he's a contributor for the CBS Sunday Morning Show and Fox News. Please join me in welcoming Ben Stein. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. It is a great pleasure. Thank you so much. Ben. Thank you so much. You know, Ben, tonight is a very special broadcast, and we're, we're coming here from Stanford University. Yes. We're simulcasting all across North America. Question. Why should people be watching tonight's broadcast versus going home and watching ESPN? So they can get all their work done so they can watch the Super Bowl and not feel guilty about their work. Now, because it's a big, big subject that they're discussing, it's a huge, huge subject that's almost as big as to be or not to be. Uh, it's going to be discussed by two incredibly smart men, and uh, they are, uh, we're really lucky to have them on the campus. I'm very familiar with Stanford. I've spoken here many times. My parents were for a year, my father was for a year on the faculty here. I know what a great school it is. Even allowing for the fact that this is such a great school, I think we've got two extraordinarily brilliant human beings uh, bringing their views to the community tonight, and uh, it's always worthwhile listening to brilliant people. Well, I'm going to be back later, but I'm going to turn it over to you now, and I'm going to ask you to set the stage for tonight's debate. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, again, it's a pleasure to be here. Let's start with this proposition. There are no atheists in foxholes, but there are plenty of atheists in universities and foundations and many of the beautiful people in big cities. Why is that? Why do some people believe it, in God so easily, and some people find it so impossible to believe in God? Or let me put it a slightly different way. Why do so many people believe in a loving God despite there being so much evidence of cruelty, death, suffering, and just plain horror in the lives of man and animals? Why, in the face of such terror, do so many people still believe in a loving God or any God at all? And why do some people feel that religion is a saving grace in human life while others find to be religion to be a danger and an oppressive force in life. Why do some people feel that if they are ill, if they're mentally ill, for example, with some kind of affliction, God will heal them? Why do they believe that God will heal them if they have some physical debilitating disease? Why do people believe that God will heal them, other people believe God will kill them, or that there's no God at all? Is God a religious, sorry, is religion a wholesome or a sinister force? And what should be our attitude towards God? Should we praise Him? condemn him, or simply be convinced he doesn't exist? Or is God on a plane so exalted, so far beyond our human understanding, that we should praise him no matter what happens in front of us? Is God just a, an evolutionary relic of some bygone era, like a, a, a relic of the time when people were required in order to safeguard themselves to believe in a father figure and to believe in the precepts of dead fathers? Is God just a psychological figment? What and who is God? We are very, very uh, puzzled as human beings about this, some of us, some of us completely convinced, 
despite everything that there is a God, some of us just feel it in our bones, some of us feel it in our bones that there could not possibly be a God. Anyway, we are very lucky to have with us today, I would say blessed to have with us today to discuss these big issues, some extremely smart, capable people, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. Christopher Hitchens, who is the man with the great English accent, is a contributing editor, of Van editor of, for Vanity Fair and a visiting professor of liberal studies at the New School. He is a super smart guy. He regularly writes for the Atlantic Monthly and Slate. He's the author of many books, including Letters to a Young Contrarian and Why Orwell Matters. He's a very big student of the life of George Orwell. He was na named one of the top 100 public intellectuals <clears throat> sorry, by Foreign Policy and Britain's Prospect. He came to my attention first when he was writing astonishingly insightful and well-written pieces from Cyprus during terrible, terrible troubles there many years ago. He's written from more than 60 countries as a foreign correspondent on all five continents. For 20 years, from 1982 to 2002, he wrote a column called The Minority Report for the Nation, which is an extremely left-wing magazine, but his reviews were quite contrarian and unexpected, hence the title of the column. Since 1992, he's been columnist and contributing editor at Vanity Fair, and at different times, Washington editor and columnist for Harper's Magazine. He's been an American columnist and correspondent for The Spectator, a very, very old and prestigious British magazine, The New Statesman, likewise, The Times Literary Supplement, Sunday Today, and The Sunday Correspondent. So he is a very major, important intellectual in the world of letters and the world of talking. Jay Richards, whom we're also very lucky and blessed to have here with us today, is a young, smart guy who's a research fellow and director of Acton Media at the Acton Institute in Grand Rapids, Michigan, the only part of Michigan that's thriving, thanks to Jay. He's invented a car that'll go 200 miles on a gallon of gasoline at 100 miles an hour. He has a PhD in philosophy and theology with honors from Princeton Theological Seminary, where he was formerly a teaching fellow. He also has a master's in theology from Calvin Theological Seminary, which I think is in Michigan, and an M Master of Divinity from Union Theological Seminary in Virginia. He is the author of many scholarly and popular articles in publications such as the Washington Post, the National Review Online, which is a fabulous online site, Washington Times, as well as, as, well as the author of several books, including The Untamed God and The Privileged Planet, How Our Place in the Cosmos is Designed for Discovery, which he wrote with a, uh, an astronomer's the center of a lot of controversy, Guillermo Gonzalez. He's the executive producer of the documentary The Call of the Entrepreneur, and he's currently writing The Christian Case for Capitalism. These two are going to be the debaters. The moderator, I'm just the introducer, is Michael Cromerty. He is the vice president of the Ethics and Public Policy Center in Washington, D.C. He directs both the Evangelicals in Civic Life and the Religion and Media Programs. On September 20, 2004, he was appointed by President Bush to a four-year term on the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, and he was elected chair the following year. He is senior advisor to the Pew Forum. Gosh, isn't it amazing how many credentials there are in people's lives? A Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life, and a senior fellow with the Trinity Forum. And by the way, he cut out most of his introduction. He's very modest. He's the co-editor of 14 books on religion and politics, and he's going to be your gifted moderator. May, you, may we have these charming people come out, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The format. Thank you, Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just quickly tell you what our format will be. Uh, this, is how we, this is how we will proceed. Uh, each of the speakers will have 14 minutes to make their opening remarks. Uh, they will then each have four minutes to respond to each other's opening remarks. Uh, they then will respond to questions that you've already written down on, on three by five cards and also questions that Ben Stein and I have for them. Uh, I, I am going to be something of the timekeeper. I will uh, be ruthless at times if they go over time. So I warn you, gentlemen, uh, we will, uh, we